So here's a quick fact. Chest radiography is the most commonly ordered imaging test in the whole emergency department. Quick tip, never order a study, radiology, lab, microbiology, or any other study, if the result will not change your clinical management in the ER. For example, if you already made up your mind that a patient with sore throat has strep and will need antibiotics, will a negative strep test stop you from writing the prescription for amoxicillin? If the answer is no, then don't order the test. If a chest x-ray is negative and you're still going to give the antibiotic order, yes, then you don't really need a chest x-ray. The cost of the patient, the radiation involved, the time involved, it's just you don't have to. Now, having said that, there's a pitfall. I've seen enough bounce backs to know that even on patients who look great, you can find a very significant findings on a chest x-ray or blood work that you did not expect. Yes, you have to use clinical judgment, but more often uh, than I care to admit, cookbook medicine has helped me pick up on something I was really not expecting at all. Like the patient with minor chest wall trauma who I ordered an x-ray looking for a rib fracture, only to find a fairly large chest tumor that the patient was totally unaware of. Or the patient with mild bronchitis that once the x-ray comes back and shows air fluid levels, in multifocal pneumonia, signifying septic emboli and this most likely secondary to endocarditis. So let's get started with chest radiography. There are three approaches to ordering radiographs, the geographic, the symptom-based, and the diagnosis-based. Let's talk about the geographic approach first. This is when you order a radiograph of the region where the patient's having the symptoms. This approach is not recommended since it can lead to diagnostic errors and excessive and unnecessary testing. Then there's a symptom-based approach, is when ordering a test depends on the characteristics of the patient's symptoms, like if they're mild, severe, pleuritic, or pressure-like, etc. The more rational of the three approaches is the diagnosis-based approach. In this approach, you first consider the possible diseases that the patient might have, the differential diagnosis, and then order a radiograph if these have a characteristic radiographic finding you're looking for. This approach is most likely to yield clinically useful information and avoid unnecessary testing. Let's talk about the radiograph views. Whenever possible, two perpendicular views should be obtained. In a busy ER, and because a lot of patients are too sick to stand or too weak to stand or dizzy, lightheaded, and so on, most patients end up getting a portable chest radiograph done in the AP anterior posterior view. Some patients are too weak to even sit up, and they do them laying down. But whenever possible, a portable chest x-ray should be done in the sitting upright position and in full inspiration. Now, the preferred technique for x-rays of the chest is the PA, the posterior anterior view. This is when the x-ray beam enters the patient through the back and the patient um, and, and goes through the chest into the imaging cassette on the front of the patient's chest. This view results in the least distortion of the aorta and the heart due to the effects of magnification. In the case of the lateral view, you do want the patient on his left side against the cassette for the same reason. X-ray enters this way, comes out this way, the heart is closest to the film, and thus there is less distortion or magnification effect. So let's get to it. How to read a radiograph. Here's one of the biggest tips that I can give you. Always look at the whole X-ray. Even though there might be some obvious finding, the most commonly missed X-ray finding is the second abnormality, i.e. the physician gets so focused on the obvious finding that they forget to look around at other findings. For example, let's say you're looking at the x-ray of a trauma patient and right away you see a medium-sized pneumothorax. You get so excited about that, you don't see rib fractures, a pulmonary contusion, and a very enlarged aortic knob, possibly signifying a traumatic rupture of the aorta. And if you picked up on all of that but forgot to look at the edges of the film, 
you might have missed the large fragment of glass that penetrated the ch patient's chest wall during the accident. So, look at the whole picture. Find a methodical way of looking at films, any film, and stick to your method to avoid errors. So there are two approaches that complement each other, the systematic approach to looking at x-rays and the targeted approach. In the systemic approach, you look at each tissue density, air, soft tissue, bone, in all four regions of the image. In the targeted approach, you look for pattern recognition and diagnosis based. This requires previous knowledge of the pathologies and their radiologic findings and gives you the worst chance of missing other findings. My recommendation is that you memorize a systemic approach and always stick to it. So let's get to it. Step one, look uh, around for a quick overview of the film. Look at the obvious findings and the expected findings you were looking for. You're looking for pneumonia, pneumothorax, and a large heart. Then look at the adequacy of the film. That's step two. Adequacy of the film. How adequate it is. Number one, is it penetrating enough? In a properly exposed chest x-ray, you should be able to see the lower thoracic vertebrae through the superimposed heart. Number two, the rotation. The center point between the medical um, clavicular heads, the medial clavicular heads, should align with the spinous process of the spine. And then inspiration. The posterior aspect of the 10th or 11th rib should be at the right costophrenic sulcus. Step three, look at the bones, ribs, shoulder, vertebral column, and then the soft tissues, the heart, mediastinums, hyla, diaphragm. And finally, look at the lungs. Always compare the right to the left. Any asymmetry could be a clue to abnormalities. So, a quick summary. Step one, do a quick overview. Number two, look at the, how adequate the film is. And number three, look at all tissue densities, soft tissue, bone, and then the lungs itself. Compare left to right, look at all four corners, and you will do a good x-ray read. In the next video, we're going to take a normal chest x-ray and discuss the normal radiographic anatomy. I'll see you then.